Welcome to Study Time, a televised home learning program produced by Rwanda Education Board. Hello, dear students. Welcome back again in this session of 30 minutes that we'll be together. Teacher Patrick will be with you again. And uh, I'll be with the senior six class once again, which is chemistry class. And uh, unit five, which is benzene and its derivatives. We have gone so far to lesson number seven of all the lessons that we've covered in unit five. And this time around, we're going to look at the chemical properties of aromatic carbonyl compounds. In the previous lesson, we remember we are talking about the preparation methods. We talked about the nomenclature of simple aromatic ketones and aldehydes. So this time we're just going to look at the behavior of these aromatic compounds. How do they react? That entails the chemical properties of these carbonyl compounds. So by the end of this lesson, I expect you to write you'll be able to write the chemical reactions of aromatic ketones and aldehydes, and you'll be able to distinguish between aromatic aldehydes from aromatic ketones. So that is our goal, or that is our, those are our objectives for today's lesson. By the end of this lesson, you should be able at least to write some chemical reactions. So those chemical reactions that we have looked at, if you can be able to write all of them, that would be wonderful. But at least you need to remember some of these chemical reactions that we look at. And then be able to distinguish between aromatic aldehydes from aromatic ketones. So some of the reactions that uh, we have to start with, without going here and there, we are going to look at electrophilic substitution reactions. So electrophilic substitution reactions, I want, you to, I want to remind you some of these electrophilic substitution that we looked at nitration, sulfonation, halogenation, alkylation, acylation, and so on. So we looked at some of these reactions. But what is very important under these electrophilic substitution reactions that you should remember is the effect of the substituents on the ring. So you remember we talked about electron withdrawing electron with drawing groups and then we talked about electron donating electron donating groups those two molecules those two groups of molecules if they are substituted, if they are attached on the benzene, directly attached on the benzene, then we mentioned about the effects. In the previous lessons, we have always mentioned this several times. So you need to remember all the time that you think about the electrophilic substitution reactions of the benzene, because we said benzene mainly undergo through this type of reaction. But you need to recall, whenever you are going to write electro, uh, a reaction, you need to recall these two words, very important words, electron withdrawing and electron donating. Remember what we talked about here. We said electron withdrawing groups Electron withdrawing, that means they are removing electrons from the ring. If they remove the electrons from the ring, then they deactivate the ring. 
So the ring will not be susceptible or highly susceptible to the attack of the electrophiles. That's what we are talking about. So they are also called deactivating. So electron withdrawing groups deactivate the ring. So we call them deactivators as well. So we call them deactivators. This is something very important. Electron withdrawing are deactivators. Whereas electron donating, these ones are activators. So what does it mean that the electron withdrawing groups, if they remove electrons from the ring, we said the effect of that is orienting other substituents to position number two and position number five on the ring. So meaning that if you have the benzene, this is the benzene ring, it has to be hexagonal, with the bonds which are alternating if this is a substituent, if this X is a substituent and it is electron withdrawing, I will emphasize electron withdrawing because that is what we are going to talk about. Aldehydes and ketones, these aromatic, these groups, they withdraw the electron. So they take up the electrons out of the ring. So they will direct, sorry, they will direct other substituents to position number three, this is position number three, and position number five. These groups are called meta positions. Meta positions. That is the most important part of these electrophilic substitution reactions. Look at what is happening here. Nitration, concentrated, uh, concentrated nitric acid, combining with the, that is, uh, considering the presence of concentrated sulfuric acid. See where the substituent goes. This is position number one, number two, so it goes to position number three, as I mentioned. If the conditions or the temperatures are increased, then the substitution can take place to, can take place on position number three. This is number four, and also number five. This is a ketone the same under nitration. So it will be position number three, meta positions. The mechanism is similar because we have done these mechanisms from the, the, the for almost from the far from the beginning. Sulfonation, that is a sulfonating agent, sulfuric acid. An aldehyde, position number three. Uh, this is a ketone with sulfuric acid. It is still, why I still emphasize on this? Electron withdrawing groups. Where they will have to orient other substituents to position number three and position number four. So you need to always remember that. How can you convert benzene to metal? So this is, you have, we had looked at this one, huh? Benzene reacting with the, this is an acid and hydride, then forms the ketone, and then the ketone is uh, nitrated, and then it goes to uh, the nitro group on position number four. Canizaro's reaction, this is oxidation reduction reactions, or with concentrated alkalis. So these reactions also, if I can remind you again, is that aromatic aldehydes and ketones undergo mainly some of the reactions that are undergone by aromatic or aromatic carbonyl compounds. So that is why we looked at the Canizaro reaction. If you remember the Canizaro reaction in in uh, uh, in unit six, that is senior five. Under carbonyl compounds, this reaction was looked at as well. So that is why 
if you can recall the reactions of the, of the aliphatic carbonyl compounds, they share the same reaction. So this is what happens. Reduction, oxidation. So two molecules, one undergoes oxidation and another one undergoes reduction. This is benzanal or benzanaldehyde, two molecules in the presence of an archive. So it, this is methyl benzal. This is um, uh, an alcohol, and then this one will change into a carboxylic acid. That is oxidation reduction and uh, Canizaro's reaction. So if you remember the reactions that we looked at, mainly the reactions that are, were the reactions of carbonyl compounds with the ammonia derivatives. The ammonia derivatives, there are a number of reactions that we looked at. The reaction with hydroxyamine, which gives hydroxymes. So this is some of the reactions that we're talking about. You so saw you have the reaction here. These reactions, this is an oxime that is formed. So these reactions are also called condensation reactions, if you remember. Carbonyl compounds with, uh, with these ammonia derivatives, one is hydroxyl amine. Uh, uh, one of the compounds that we have seen is hydroxyl amine that form the oxymes. Now, condensation reactions, why? Molecules of water. So you see molecules of water being formed. Whether it is an aldehyde, whether it is a ketone, then they undergo the same reactions. Those are ammonia derivatives. So with hydrazines, so the hydrazine, this is an example of the hydrazine, to form hydrazones. So this is still under the ammonia derivatives. And these reactions are also looked at. We are not going to take a lot of time on this because this, we have looked at these reactions even before under carbonyl compounds. So they are also condensation reactions as well. Similarly, phenyl hydrazines. So this is a phenyl hydrazine that form phenyl hydrazone. This is not different from the other compound, from the other, because it is also a derivative of ammonia compound. So these reactions, as I mentioned, they are also referred to as, uh, they are also referred to as condensation reactions. If you remember very well, 2,4-dinitrophenylhydrazine, 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 this is commonly known as Brady's reagent. This compound is, was common in the uh, Alphatic aldehydes. So alphatic aldehydes, when they react with this compound, this compound is used to distinguish, to distinguish carbonyl compounds, distinguish carbonyl compounds from other functional groups from other functional groups. So other, comp other I mean carbonyl compounds we are talking about, it can be either a ketone, it can be an aldehyde. So with this 2,4-dinitrophenyl hydrazine, when an aldehyde, whether it is a ketone, whether it is an aldehyde, whether it is a, uh, an aldehyde, whether it is a ketone or an aldehyde, whether aromatic or aromatic, they will produce this yellow, orange, or red precipitate. Yellow, orange, or red precipitate is formed. So that is the, a very important reagent. Distinguish carbonyl compounds from other functional groups. 
When you have an aldehyde, for example, I said an aldehyde, it can be either aromatic or aromatic. Or you may have aldehyde, and these two, they are either, both of them, or you may have an aldehyde, or you have a ketone as well. It may be a ketone, and whether aromatic or aromatic, they will both give the positive test. So when they react, when you react aromatic aldehydes and aromatic aldehydes, there is always a positive test. There is always a red or yellow orange precipitate that will be formed with uh, that 2,4 dinitrophenyl hydrazine, which is Brady's reagent. So that is the main important. Aromatic aldehydes and ketone gives a yellow precipitate. It is yellow-orange, mainly yellow-orange precipitate with 2,4 dinitrophenyl hydrazine. Whereas aromatic aldehydes and ketones will give a red precipitate. So that means this compound as well, you can use it depend on the, depending on the color of the precipitates. You can be able to tell that this is aromatic or aromatic ketone, aromatic ketone or aldehyde, or aromatic aldehyde or ketone. Because we have seen that if it is aromatic, aromatic ketone or aldehyde, on addition of this Brady's reagent, you are getting yellow orange precipitate. This is very important. Yellow orange precipitate. Aromatic ketone or aldehyde. When it is aromatic, aromatic ketone or aldehyde, you are getting red precipitate. Red precipitate. Red precipitate. So that is the red and yellow can be used also to distinguish between aromatic and aromatic, uh, these aldehydes and ketones. So those are some of the reactions. This is an aromatic aldehyde, which is, a, this is 2,4-dinitrophenyl hydrazine. This is the, the structure of 2,4-dinitrophenyl hydrazine. And the product that is formed, which is a hydrazone, which is formed here, is the one that is a uh, yellow precipitate. When you have, this is a ketone, this is the benzene group, and it is reacting with this, Brady's reagent. So you are getting a red precipitate, red precipitate of the hydrazone with aromatic. So these two reactions are just representing what I was just talking about, these two here about the aromatic and the aromatic reactions. So there are some other reactions that we talk about uh, concerning still the derivatives of ammonia. And these are called the, uh, the semi-carbazides. Aldehydes and ketones react with the semi-carbazides. This is one of those reactions of, of the of the ammonia derivatives. So they form semicarbazones. That is the general, general names, semicarbazones. So this is a semicarbazide, as even this one. So when this is an aldehyde, and this is a ketone. So they react still. This is under still condensation reactions. Torrens reagent, very important reaction. Torrens reagent. When aldehyde, aromatic or ketone is warmed with ammoniacal or ammoniated silver nitrate, that is a solution of ammonia, a solution 
of uh, silver nitrate in ammonia is what we call Torrens reagent. So this Torrens reagent is used to distinguish, remember, aromatic, uh, sorry, to distinguish between aromatic, between aromatic, aromatic ketones from aldehydes, from aldehydes. No reaction here. The reaction takes place with the silver, with the silver mirror formation. With the silver mirror formation. That is aromatic or aromatic. Aldehydes, even aromatic, aldehydes. So no reaction. If it is aromatic ketone, no reaction as well. But if it is aromatic aldehyde, still you will have a silver mirror formation, distinguishing from aldehydes from ketones. Whether aromatic or aromatic, this reaction is used to distinguish between them by formation of the mirror a bright silver mirror that is formed in the inner sides of the test tube. So this reaction is under oxidation reactions of uh, aldehydes because ketones do not react with this ammoniated silver nitrate. So it is only for aldehydes. And I repeat, it distinguishes between ketones from aldehydes. Aromatic ketones and aromatic aldehydes, the same reagent. Aromatic ketones and aromatic aldehydes. You can use the Torrens reagent. So there is always formation of the silver mirror with aldehydes and no observable change. So if you are given a question, for example, that how can you distinguish? How can you distinguish? How can you distinguish between, uh, let me take an example of this, CHO and these two compounds. This is a ketone, this is a ketone, and this is an aldehyde, aldehyde. So what, how can you distinguish? If you want the distinguishing reagent, you need the Torrens reagent. That is what we are talking about, Torrens reagent. What did I say? The Torrens reagent only reacts with aldehydes. And what is the observation? Silver mirror formation. The mirror, the silver, the, the mirror formed inside the, the test tube with aldehyde. No observable change with that reaction. So that is very important reaction to not. Fairing solution. So this only applies to aldehydes. Fairing solutions contain copper two ions, which is compressed, compressed with sodium potassium nitrate. Uh, in the reaction, you have copper two ions, which are reduced copper one oxide. So the observation, this the observation is because of the red precipitate. This red precipitate is formed when you have uh, aldehydes. But this is a very important note that one should not forget. Ketones do not react with this fairing solution. Aromatic aldehydes do not react with fairing solution either. So what does that mean? It means that fairing solution only applies to aromatic aldehydes 
and ketones. So you can also use it. I just brought it in here so that because I've said some of the reactions of the carbonyl compounds, whether fatic or aromatic, are shared. But I just brought this one here to emphasize this, that ketones, as we have said, ketones do not react with fairing solution. Aromatic aldehydes as well do not react. So this applies only to aromatic compounds. So this distinguishes as well aromatic compounds, aromatic aldehydes, and aromatic ketones, not aromatic aldehydes. So iodoform test. I think this will be the last test that we are going to talk about. We looked at this test under the carbonyl reaction. The iodoform, that is a mixture of iodine. So you have the iodine in sodium hydroxide. And this is the one they call iodoform, iodoform test. So this reaction only applies to compounds, whether ketones or aldehydes, but which has the methyl group. Those that have the methyl group, so they are also under oxidation. So ketones, ketones and aldehydes can also be used, can also be distinguished by using this reaction. So this is a methyl group. Ketones with this methyl group, of course ketones have that methyl group. So this reaction distinguishes, so it's different from the silver mirror that we have talked about, or the Torrens reagent. Now this iodoform test gives a positive test with ketones. So the ketones will be, give a positive test, that is a yellow precipitate of this triiodomethane because of the methyl group over here. So whereas aldehydes, the aldehydes, because they lack that methyl group, these ones, no observable change. No observable, observable change. So it is used to distinguish ketones from aldehyde. So before I leave or before we wind up this lesson, I would like us to look at some of the, uh, maybe the assignment to try. Number one, give simple chemical tests to distinguish between the following compounds. Propanone, propanar, and propanone. These are aromatic, right? Acetophenone and benzophenone. These are aromatic. Pentan 2 on and pentan 3 on, these are also aromatic. Benzaldehyde and acetophenone, benza, that is also aromatic. Ethanar and propanar. And then lastly, you write equations to show the reaction of benzaldehyde with the following and state the conditions involved during the reaction. Two bromo concentrated and so that. So look at that reaction. Look at the questions, then try to answer them. For all the time we've been together, I thank you so much for being with me in these 30 minutes. I hope to be with you again in the next 30 minutes to come. Bye-bye.